So here we are about to execute the Python program. As usual, the red arrow is at line one. Since this is the main program, this if condition is going to be true. So when I click on next, the red arrow will come into the if statement. Now we know how this works. We are initializing this variable x. That means we're labeling this integer object. We are printing its ID. That is this number. Now we're multiplying it with three. As experienced Python programmers, we know that what Python tutor is about to show us where this value is changing to 3.7 billion, that's not quite true. Actually, a fresh object was created and this label x was moved from the old object to this new object. So now when we print this id, we do see a different number being printed. Now, of course, this number is positive. So we will go into the if condition and we will print positive as we have seen. And now notice that there are no more statements to execute because we have done the if condition. And so we will skip the elif and we will skip the else. And there are no more statements in this program. Now, let us see the equivalent code about to execute in C. The first thing I want you to observe is the location of the red arrow. It's not on line one, it's on line two. In general, wherever you have this int main, that is where the red arrow will start. Now, inside this int main, there is an x that is going to be declared. Python tutor has already declared it and showed it to us with a question mark. It's uninitialized. But when we get to that line, we will see its value being initialized to this large integer. So let's click on next and proceed with the visualization. So now we come to line two. Here is where this value is actually going to be initialized. And there we get the value. Now we're going to print, roughly speaking, the ID of x. Remember, this is ampersand of x. This is the address of x. So this uh, integer lives somewhere in memory. We are simply printing that location in memory or that address in memory. So this printf statement is going to print some value. It's a negative number, which is perhaps a little bit uh, confusing, but we will come to that point in a little while. This is some location. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is now when we multiply x with 3, that same location in memory is going to be updated. Unlike in Python, no fresh integer is going to be created in C. That same memory address, this strange looking number, at that same address, a new value is going to be stored. But wait a minute, that new value is going to be three times 1.2 billion. And that is beyond the representable range for C integers at least these 32-bit C integers. So what's going to happen? Well, let's click on next and see what happens to this. This value changes to a negative number. So you see, we have this range from roughly minus 2 billion all the way up to about 2 billion. When we exceed the upper limit, the value rolls around to the negative region. So 1.2 billion times 3, which is roughly 3.7 billion, is so far above the upper limit that we have rolled around to minus 2 billion and continued from there until we reach this value. Now, this print statement is going to print the address of x since that is the same location in memory. This time, when we have the second print statement, we get exactly the same number. Again, remember, no fresh integer object was created in C. Ints in C are mutable, unlike int objects in Python. Now, of course, the value of x is a negative number. So what's going to happen on line 7? Well, this if condition is not going to be true. So the red arrow is going to jump to the else if case. And this statement is true. So the red arrow is going to jump to line 11 and now we're going to print negative. Now we're at the end of the program. So the red arrow has skipped past the else and come to 
the last statement which is return 0. So now the code is ready to return. Before we continue with the lecture, I want you to pay attention to this critical concept of limited precision in C. We could take an operation multiplying an integer by 3 which makes sense in mathematics and we can execute that code sensibly in Python but when we translate that code into C suddenly it behaves differently. It makes no sense from a mathematical perspective that a positive integer like 1.2 billion when multiplied with another positive integer gives us a negative integer. But now we understand why this is happening and so as C programmers we must be careful because this is what C programs do. We can't change that, the only thing we can do is be aware of it and write code according to that understanding.